Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. You haven't seen an update from me maybe for a week now because I was working on other cars such as the my brother's Audi, uh, the Peugeot RCZ and I've done one timing belt, a wet belt on a Vauxhall Astra which, uh, sorry, Vauxhall Grandland X, uh, about which will be a video very soon. So, uh, and also like I wanted to start the week yesterday as normally with Monday I work every day by the way but yeah I wanted to start it the, this this what I'm going to do today I wanted to do it yesterday but the weather crossed my my plans because in my area uh, East Anglia or East England it was snowing yesterday and yeah so even though I would set up the tent the snow would get underneath it and like snow on the on the car as well so I said okay keep a one day off but I was so nervous I didn't do anything inside the house outs uh, like outside I didn't do anything, I just dropped off my work, uh, girlfriend to work, slept, picked her up, ate something, watched one movie and then slept again till today. So the today's plan is, I got here one Mazda CX-5 which was brought to me here by the, not by the owner, but by the, by, by a tow, tow truck or trailer, because he had an issue with the oil pressure and the AA or the RAC, doesn't matter, has been with him like two times and what they've done, they told him even with the engine oil pressure light, this car is safe to drive. So, if, got, if you guys ever have the oil pressure warning light or any oil connected related light on the dashboard, never drive the car because that can cost you an engine. So second time it came up, he, he, he was actually driving to me, I think, and on the way, I mean, with 10, 16 miles on the way, it came up again, he called the guys, then, then they uh, towed the truck, or towed, towed the car to me, so it's here. Um, and even though the oil strainer was replaced, he still has the oil pressure issues, which I will sort out for him and I'll tell you what the issue was or what the issue is and what I suspect. So once I sit in the car, I'll explain a bit more about it. But for now, let me talk about the other car. So that, that's a Mazda 6 series that was brought to me on a tow truck or a trailer as well and uh, I've done the, the cleaning, the carbon cleaning on it and done the bottom end cleaning so I replaced the oil strainer and cleaned the bottom end and the top end cleaning replaced the camshafts and the bits and cleaned the top as well and when I started the car up I heard a rattling plastic noise from the timing chain side of the engine from under, from, from the bottom and I suspect either the tensioner is worn out or the chain is uh, like the chain is stretched because when I put when I was putting back the sprocket for the oil pump chain it went back on quite easily and it shouldn't be but at that time I didn't really think about it but when I, when, I, when I started up the car I heard it so I said I cannot return this in this condition to the owner so once I remove the parts from remove the parts of one from the CX-5 I'm going to work it on the Mazda 6 um, yeah, so let me sit in the CX-5 and explain you a little bit of the, the history of the car. Well, so I'm now in the CX-5. My left hand is a bit tired, so I'm just having the, the camera supported or my arm supported on the armrest. That's why you can see my double chin. But back to the topic. So the car, the CX-5, was brought here to me around maybe two months ago. Um, and yeah, I diagnosed the car already, checked what I, what I ha usually check on the car. I can't remember if the vacuum pump needs replacement, but I'll check that. It's not, not a difficult check, I can check it on the live data. But what was like told to me, that it has oil pressure issues, although it, the oil pressure warning light didn't come on when I was testing the car. But I tested it at, when, it, when the engine was called and test, I was looking for the... I'm not, was, I was checking the oil pressure. So at cold, it was like at within the spec, within the range, uh, hot, meaning you have to test it when the coolant or the engine oil is between 70 and 80 degrees of Celsius. Check it at idle, check it at 2000 RPM and check it at 3500 RPM. So at idle, when the engine is hot, it should be around at least 160. 160, it's good. 2000 RPM, it should be 180. KPA, I'm talking KPA, you, or you can count it or like count it in, in bars as well. So either 1.6 at idle, 1.8 at 2000 RPM. 
and if you rev it up and leave and keep it there at three and a half thousand rpm you should be looking at around 400 kph or four bars and the the car had low even though on idle it had lower oil pressure so what i suspect is that as the as the owner told me that the oil strainer was replaced which is cool which is great guess i clean they cleaned the the bottom end as well but the issue is the it all starts from from the top so the the sludge builds up on the top because the fuel is mixing with oil and it gets like um, stuck there builds up carbon around the injector hose that's one thing and then when you turn off the car those sludges gets down the oil passages to the oil pan and blocks the oil strainer but also blocks the passages so the what they've done is very likely they just fixed the symptoms but they didn't fix the cause the root of the issue which is up top so i suspect if i remove the valve cover which i'm going to do today so if i remove it i'll be see a lot of oil sludge around injector holes maybe worm camshaft whatever so i'm really curious to see if to prove my theory but yeah that's what i suspect that's why he may have still the uh, oil pressure issues even though they changed the oil strainer so yeah that's what i'm going to do and then as i said once i finish with this one just with the removal then i let the owner what i found out and discuss with him what we're going to do as a next step or next precautions so once I'm done with that, I'll bring in the Mazda, the 6, and I'll start removing the same things because I first I'll remove the, the bottom of the engine, so the oil pan, obviously, and check that uh, tensioner and the uh, timing chain on the oil pump. But I really, I 99% I think that the timing chain has to be changed. So once I remove the oil pan, I remove the valve cover, remove the engine ECU and prepare the car. I'll probably do it tomorrow. So prepare the car for the timing chain replacement. It's quite a hell of a job because you need to remove the, the valve cover, the oil pan, engine mounts, a lot of things you need to remove. It's not that easy or it's not difficult, but it's very time consu consuming. That's the problem. And in the meanwhile, uh, a little update on the Peugeot, which I'll maybe do a separ separate video about it. So I started it up, checked it, no leaks, nothing, everything is fine, except the brakes. I, f I bled the clutch, I bled, I bled the coolant, I drove it a little bit as well, but the brakes are like not not working as they should, so they, they, the car doesn't break. Obviously it's here for two months now, maybe three, I'm not sure. So it's rusted up everything, so I'll need to... First I'll bleed the brakes and then I'll take it for a little test drive just here in the street, just to remove the rust from the brakes and then I'll take it to the road and test it there. Once I'm done with, and ha done with the testing and happy with the result, I'm going to swap the turbo housing and finally I can return it to the owner. So it will take me a bit more days, maybe two, three days, because I'll I'll start it maybe tomorrow I'll, or maybe today. I don't know. I want. I'll see. I definitely need to bleed the brakes and then can I can test take it for a test drive just here in the street, and that's it. So yeah, without further ado and without wasting further time, let me start removing valve cover on the Mazda CX-5 and show you how it is looking like underneath unfortunately or not unfortunately i won't be showing the removal the process itself because i am on my own at the moment so now one is helping me my brother-in-law been back home and my father-in-law will come a week later or two weeks later it doesn't matter so on my own i won't showing you the process although you can find the entire removal on my channel i've done video on it um including a lot of specs well, how to do it what to look for so feel free to watch it so yeah without further ado and wasting another uh, precious time let me remove the valve cover real quick real quick also i wanted to show you how his car is looking from the top so you see it's wet around the injectors everywhere so that's why I suspect it needs like a proper cleaning. Maybe the camshaft is worn. I can see the, the pressure sensor is replaced. So that's good. But still, I really, really think that will be the issue. That will be the cause why he still has the oil pressure issues. So now I'm going to remove the bits and report back once I remove the valve cover, how it is looking like from underneath it. Okay, let me show you the result. So I remove the valve cover. All the 
like three injectors were fairly easy to remove one three four as you can see and the second was difficult i had to use my special tool that one and again because it was difficult to remove not because it was difficult to remove but it was difficult to remove because of that oil, oil sludge and um, yeah engine it's down there as well so unfortunately the camshaft is not worn so that's a good sign or a good news for the owner it just needs like a proper cleaning and reassembling it back together obviously i may remove the oil pan i still need to confirm that with the owner because like you know i don't know what's down there we will see but even though if i don't remove it oil change definitely necessary engine flush and then it can go back to the owner so i'm done with this one today let me show you the other bits and parts here is the valve cover from inside or from underneath it doesn't look that bad it's quite okay only around the second injector hole and here and maybe the pcv system so you um, unscrew it and then clean it from inside from the top it's like quite dirty i won't turn it around but you've seen that on the video on the first clips so yeah that that needs cleaning as well and let me show you the injectors so here they're uh, here they are and this one was the second like for the uh, this is the second injector and as you can see the rest is like quite okay obviously I wiped them down i wiped this one down as well but it's like you you see those carbon chunks on it and as you can see none of them have the washers but i only have three washers in here all the times or when i remove the injectors the one which is difficult to remove the washers uh, the washer still stays down the injector hole no big deal i can remove it i'll show you how to what tool i use uh, here are the brackets um studs i put the parts on, already in a bag i'll put this one in a bag and contact the owner and ask him what to do how to proceed and then obviously let you know guys and probably put the car back together not with these parts but the new parts very likely the, the owner will want to get it fixed and then once i fix it put back the parts and the car should be good to go